What's my thoughts on OM Systems OM1? After 100,000 clicks and hundreds of hours of videos, well, let's find out. Hi, it's Jimmy Cheng here from Red35. After my original emotional and biased review of the OM1 last year, I have not made any further videos about this wild camera from OM System. Because of its status, I kind of felt that I should make my review not based on initial view, but by actual use. And not from a few weeks or even months, but a whole year. Just like the video I made of the Olympus Eamon Mark II just a few years back. Now, after 100,000 clicks and many, many hours of videos and a few firmware updates later, I can finally make my proper review on the OM1. A camera that I finally concur is wow status that OM system promised us back in the end of 2021. Before I make my case in the midterm review, please note that I am an OM system ambassador and I'm reviewing this camera based on my knowledge and experience using my Core 4 thirds and Olympus slash OM system cameras. However, I will include plenty of actual examples from my professional jobs so you can get a feel on what you can achieve with this very camera. Also, this video won't be a feature by feature in depth study of the OM1. And in fact, OM system has done a great job in explaining everything in details. And I have a link in the video description so you can check it out after this video. So, without further ado, Let's go. From a design and build point of view, I can straight away say that this is a first class product. It feels solid, rugged and built to last. My OM1 has been through all kinds of conditions over the past 12 months. Downpour, freezing snow, dusty wind, scorching heat. Yeah, remember that heat wave that we had in London last year? And just about anything you can imagine. Compared to Olympus' previous flagship, the EM1 Mark III and the EM1 X, I would say that the OM1 feels more solid than the EM1 Mark III, and very, very close to the X, which to me, still the most rugged, indestructible Michael Forsworth's cameras ever. So the OM1 definitely leaves a lasting impression quite literally, that is designed and built with professionals in mind. In terms of ergonomic, it's more of an evolution from previous generations, which is no bad thing, because my first professional Olympus camera, the EM1 Mark II, already felt perfect in my hands. And all the subsequent updates only brought further refinement and enhancement to the overall feel, rather than a major redesign. And something that I'm sure that most EM1 owners would agree. And even Chris from DP Review claims that OM1's grip is the best that he's ever used. Well, quite a big price if you ask me, from a guy who reviews a ton of cameras every year. So don't just take my word for it. Straight to the cream of this video is of course, image quality. Just remember that I have never ever complain about image quality from any previous EM1 cameras. So you kind of know what I'm about to say. There is a noticeable improvement in retaining information from the new BSI sensor. I wouldn't say that it is something you can see straight away. But from someone who photographs on an upward of 100,000 photographs a year, I can tell you that the degree in massaging the files to the way I like, in terms of final presentation, is vastly improved, especially at high ISO range. This gives me a lot of headroom when it comes to tricky situations, or at time when I need to bump the ISO up for faster shutter speed to freeze action if needed. But one thing I must stress, that I'm glad to see OM system didn't alter the color profile on the OM1. 
One thing that attracted me to switch from Canon to Olympus instead of others was the colors. It's a personal thing, I know, and photographers can be quite picky at times. But I found Olympus and now OM Systems color profile to be natural and realistic, especially on skin tones. And this is a must for my line of work. And here are some portraits I've shot with my OM1 over the past year. So, enjoy. If I say that the OM1 is noise free, <laughs> then I will be lying. A photographer must be reasonable when it comes to managing his or her expectations. While there's an improvement in noise performance, it's not going to be crystal at ISO 3200. But it does mean that color noise is very well managed, resulting in much easier, faster clean and better color reproduction in high ISO settings. Luminous noise level is similar to that of uh, EM1 Mark III and X, which means that you get a very organic noise pattern that resembles film grains in the old days. Better or worse, however, it's not up to me to tell you, but I've been using Olympus Micro Four Third cameras for all my professional jobs since 2016. And while I've used ISO 3200 and 6400 in some emergency cases, majority of my photographs were shot at much lower ISO settings. And this is a combination of understanding lights using faster lenses such as 1.2 and 2.8 Pro lenses and that seven stop crazy body stabilizations. So while I can't say the OM1 can beat larger formats in noise wall, I can say that it is comparable when you factor everything in. I did a separate video and the link is up here explaining the merits of Michael Four Thirds a couple of months ago using an actual wedding as an example between full frame Sony a7 III and my OM1. And I would highly recommend you to watch that video to see why I made such a statement. Speed is always a prominent exhibition on all Olympus and OM flagship cameras. And the OM1 is no exception. This thing is a speed demon. <laughs> and I won't count numbers, but the OM1 focuses lightning quick, with more than fast enough continuous burst speed in both mechanical and electronic shutter modes. The likelihood that you will miss a shot is pretty slim, though you may end up having a ton of photos to review as a result. Speaking of speed, being a new generation of BSI sensor means that the readout speed is exceptional, giving you much better viewing experience through either the back screen or the EVF together with almost roll fee planning in both viewing and recording. New to OM1 are some enhanced computational features. Live ND can now go all the way to ND64. Face and eye detection are now better and more accurate. And there's a revamped and vastly improved subject detection for cars, planes, trains, birds, and the four-legged things that transform any photographer into expert in any of these categories. For me, my most used feature is Live ND for all my creative portrait works. Coupled with the improved and insane IBIS on the OM1, I can literally do any long exposure photos with my subjects in bright daylight without any filters or tripods. This really is a game changer for me. But of course, you can use Live ND for landscape or night cityscape too, if you wish. 
but while it's much improved than the last generation of cameras, I would still prefer to use physical filters for any extended long exposure photography. And all in all, OM1 has set a new boundary in computational photography. I know most of you probably won't really care about video features on Olympus or OM system, but let me tell you what, I film everything in this channel with them and I produce and film projects for all my commercial clients. So if you're like me, you'll be happy to know that video on the OM1 is many, many, many times better than any previous Olympus cameras. I won't bother making a statement of 4K or 60p because many competitors have bigger numbers and if you're a real filmmaker, you probably film in 24p anyway. But a couple of things that I'm really happy to see are unlimited recording and 10-bit color space. The new BSI sensor also eliminates rolling shutter and this is a big plus when you film fast actions and when you pan. The latest firmware also improves CAF in video, making it more reliable than ever before but I'll explain a little more later. I've created really cool videos for my clients with my E1X and E1 Mark III before, and the new OM1 has really stepped up. I also love the raw output so I can get even higher quality footage with my Atomos Ninja 5, if I really need. But now with the really capable internal recording capability, I rely less on the Ninja 5, so I can just use the camera itself instead of a big rig <laughs> and this makes mobile filming even easier and this is the strength of Micro Four Thirds. So after a full year of using the OM1, do I still think it is the wow camera that OM system promised us? Heck yes, <laughs> I personally think that it is the best high-end hybrid Micro Four Thirds cameras for photographers to date. While most new features are more evolutionary than revolutionaries, they're all welcome and together makes the OM1 the most complete Micro Four Thirds cameras you can buy to date. It is really hard to quantify the improvements, but if you're upgrading from let's say the E1 Mark II to OM1, you will be in for cultural shock. <laughs> less so if you're upgrading from uh, let's say the previous generation, the Mark III or the X because they are already very, very capable cameras. But, of course, there is always a but. There are a few things that, well, while not critical to me, I think could be improved in the future. First is the autofocus, especially in continuous mode in video shooting. Don't get me wrong though, the latest firmware has definitely improved the stickiness to track subject and makes it more usable in real life but there are now two distinct CAF behaviors in standard AF point driven CAF and face or face and eye detection CAF modes. This may not impact many cinematographer or filmmaker, but if you plan to use the OM1 as a vlogging camera or self-filming machine, just like what I'm doing right now, then you may like to hear this. The face and eye detection is now so good that it sticks to your face, quite literally, <laughs> even if you put something in front of it and the system will not try to refocus to anything else, even if the face is blocked momentarily. And this can be an isolated case, but for many times I've tried to put a product in front of the, uh, my face, for instance, while presenting my review, the OM1 simply refuses to refocus to the product. Uh, well, it will eventually, but that takes many seconds later, making dynamic filming style not possible. And this is something that the E1X does very well. You may think that 
Well, let's switch off the face attack and use the AF point driven CAF. Well, this mode has a little brain on its own. And while it works most of the time, it sometimes jumps from one place to another, making it a little unreliable, if you ask me. I'm sure that this is a firmware issue and can be improved over time, as OM has demonstrated since the launch of the OM1 last year. And the executives in Japan already confirmed that the OM1 will be subjected to many firmware updates over time, which could also include new features, and that is something that I'm looking forward to see. However, there is one thing that firmware can't fix, and that is the buffer size. While I don't have any official buffer size figure to say, but if you do a lot of raw burst shooting, such as Pro Capture, you'll find that the buffer gets filled pretty quickly, even when using the fastest SD cards available. The biggest buffer Olympus camera is still the E1X, which seems to be able to shoot forever. And that depends on your use case, of course, but sometimes that you may want to take note. But like I said, it is not critical, it's just something I found over the course of last year. All in all though, the OM1 is the best Michael Forther camera, a dream camera to use for sure. It is also my workhorse and I depend on it to make my vision come true. It has some software quirks that need ironing out, but given a continuous commitment from OM system, I am pretty sure that the already impressive OM1 will continue to improve in many years to come. That's it folks, hope you enjoyed this video. And what's your experience on the OM1 if you own one? Do you plan to get one soon? And what's the potential new features that you want OM system to bring to the OM1 in the future firmware updates? And what's your Michael Forthert cameras you're using right now? Let's have a chat in the comment section below. And thanks again for watching and you know what to do now. Thumb if you like this video and sub if you want to stay in touch with all things photography, filmmaking and of course, OM system. Peace. Ah, thanks for sticking around. You know, there's always a little bonus bit here at the end of my videos. <laughs> so, well, let's talk a little bit about the OM1. And uh, I do genuinely love this camera. The last time I felt really um, emotional uh, 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 with any Olympus slash OM cameras was the E1 Mark II. And don't get me wrong, all the other great cameras, but the reason why the E1 Mark II was because it was the time when I decided to switch from my long-term professional cameras, the Canon stuff, to Olympus, a Michael Forther platform. Uh, E1 Mark II was that camera that really drove me into it, and I thought it was a really capable camera, it was really fantastic. It still is, really, it still is a camera that I really enjoy using uh, from time to time. But the OM1, it, it has a lot more things that I would say um, uh, compared to the Mark II, uh, to the latest uh, uh, stuff, you know, like the new sensor, the new capabilities, the new speed. Uh, it really genuinely a very capable camera, making it very, very modern and uh, that can take on many jobs that I have in the future. Uh, so I love it. I love it. And not only that, you know, like you saw my uh, uh, emotional uh, first review video that I made last year uh, with my dad in it and uh, because um, the OM1 also the name itself means a lot to me as well and uh, you haven't seen that video the link is up here and uh, but yeah it generally I just think that it is quite a camera and um, but don't forget that it is also has the Olympus name on it and this will be the last time you see it as you can see the OM5 already have no Olympus name on the prism and this will be the last camera that ever featured the name Olympus on modern digital mirrorless cameras from this era on. And uh, so yeah, it is a quite a special camera. So if you haven't got one and you think of getting one, I think it's not, you know, uh, too late to get one before they replace this camera in a year or two time, you know, and uh, becoming the OM1 Mark II, whatever, you know, that is not going to have an Olympus name on it. So this will be that special camera forever. So yep, this is not going to going anywhere. I'm going to keep using this camera, keeping it, even though it retires from my professor jobs, it will still be the camera that I will keep and treasure forever. <laughs>